Shang Guanwan was born into a family of wealth and privilege. Her grandfather Shang Guanyi was the prime minister of Emperor Gao Zhong during the Tang Dynasty. However, due to her grandfather's involvement in the removal of the Empress Dowager incident, she was implicated. As a result, the young Shang Guanwan had to accompany her mother to the Ye Ting and serve others at a very young age. The Ye Ting, also known as the Ye Ting Palace, is a place designated for the wives and family of palace maids, servants, and corrupt officials. It can be considered as the darkest corner within the Grand Palace. It was the place where Shang Guanwan grew up. Normally, when a person falls into the Ye Ting, they may become slaves for life. However, Shang Guanwan was different. She displays exceptional talent from young age. Her mother possessed a certain level of literary cultivation. Under her guidance, Shang Guanwan became proficient in poetry and literature. She also developed a deep understanding of government affairs and displayed exceptional intelligence. During that time, the Ye Ting Palace had two teachers who taught calligraphy and various art to palace women. Therefore, some suggest that Shang Guanwan Er received a systematic and rigorous education within the palace. At that time, power was held under the first female emperor Wu Zhitian. As a rare female politician of that era, she naturally paid extra attention to talented women. When she heard of Shang Guanwan's outstanding performance, she decided to give her a test. Soon, Wu Zhitian summoned Shang Guanwan and presented her with a question on the spot. Without any hesitation, she quickly completed the task with her excellent writing, accompanied by her beautiful calligraphy and stunning appearance. Wu Zhitian was overwhelmed by her ability. She immediately decided to free her from her servant status and appoint her to handle imperial decrees. From then on, many of the edicts issued by Wu Zhitian were written by Shang Guanwan Er, including promotion of officials and important military affairs. However, her humble upbringing brought about a deep sense of insecurity in Shang Guanwan's heart. She only trusted herself and believed in power. She knew well that her current position was merely a puppet in the hands of Wu Zhitian. Finally, Shang Guanwan committed a capital offense. She was unwilling to be controlled, so she secretly tampered with official documents. When Wu Zhitian learned of this, she was furious. But recognizing her talent, she spared her from death. Although Shang Guanwan escaped a capital punishment, she couldn't avoid punishment altogether. She was finally subjected to the punishment known as facial branding. This involved carving characters onto her face and then applying ink and charcoal, leaving permanent marks that could never be removed. To conceal the scar on her forehead and heart of disfigurement, Shang Guanwan cleverly adorned it with a red plum blossom, which unexpectedly had a remarkable effect. Not only did it cover the scars, but it also enhanced her beauty. Therefore, many palace women imitated her style and it became known as the Red Plum Makeup. This escape from death made Shang Guanwan Er realize even more deeply that she was powerless to contend with Wu Zhitian. In 705, Crown Prince Li Xian, along with Prime Minister Zhang Xianzhi, Chui Xuanwei, and other ministers launched the Shenlong coup, forcing Wu Zhitian to abdicate the throne and pass it to Li Xian. In this coup, Shang Guanwan was the mastermind behind the scenes. She had been secretly in contact with Princess Taiping, a member of Crown Prince faction, in order to free herself from Wu Zhitian's control. Ultimately, it was through the information she provided that the coup was able to proceed successfully. After the collapse of Wu Zhitian's regime, Li Xian was moved by Shang Guanwan's beauty and intelligence. He gave her the title of Zhao Rong and allowed her to continue overseeing the affairs of an imperial court. Although she was getting closer to the center of power, Shang Guanwan knew well that she couldn't follow the footsteps of Wu Zhitian, as she lacked the support of an influential relative. To consolidate the power further, she turned her attention to Empress Wei. 
Despite Empress Wei's awareness of Shang Guan Warrior's motive, she valued her talent and chose to keep her by her side. To help the Empress strengthen the power, Shang Guan Warrior used her influence to recommend Wu San Shi to the Emperor, thereby diminishing the power of other senior officials. She also assisted in the removal of Crown Prince Li Chongjun, who was not born to Empress Wei. Although Zhang Guan Warriors held immense power and favor under the Emperor and Empress, she considered both of them unreliable. In 710, Zhang Guan Warrior, who couldn't achieve her ambitions under Empress Wei, sought refuge with Princess Tai Ping, who was Wu Zhitian's daughter and Emperor Zhong Zhong's youngest sister. Shortly after, Emperor Zhong Zhong suddenly passed away, leaving Empress Wei in full control and displaying a domineering authority similar to Wu Zhitian. Witnessing this, Shang Guan Wang and Princess Taiping urgently drafted a testament in the name of the late Emperor, attempting to place Li Chongmao on the throne. However, Shang Guan Warrior failed to notice that Prime Minister Zhong Shu Ke and Wen Wei modified the testament, actively encouraging Empress Wei to follow the footsteps of Wu Zhitian. Upon receiving the news, Prince Li Longji, who was the grandson of Wu Zhitian, son of Li Dan, collaborated with Princess Taiping and decided to seize the initiative. On July 21st, Li Longzhi initiated the Tang Long coup by mobilizing the Imperial Guards and launching an attack on the palace. Empress Wei and all her supporters were killed. Li Longji then proclaimed his father Li Dan as the new emperor, Emperor Rui Zhuang. Shang Guan Wang Er, who was once a trusted confidant of Empress Wei, found herself in a precarious position. On the day Li Longji entered the palace, she rushed to the palace gate to greet him and hastily presented a testament she had drafted with Princess Tai Ping, trying to show her alignment with the Li family. However, it was too late. Li Longji remained insistent on her execution. Shang Guan Wang finally died at the age of 46. Shang Guan Wang inherited and developed her grandfather's literary style in the field of poetry. She placed importance on the formal technique of poetry and particularly valued the beauty of sound and expression. She excelled in depicting the delicate and exquisite visual aspect of things. During the reign of Emperor Zhong Zhong, due to her political position and influence, her poetry style gradually influenced not only the court poet but also other scholars in their creative direction. The Shang Guan style became the mainstream in the upper class. After her death, Princess Taiping was deeply saddened. She submitted a memorial requesting the compilation of Shang Guan Wire's poems. The collection consisted of 20 volumes, but unfortunately, it is now lost. 